This is Vern Benham Grimsley on campus. Where does, where does God live? Does he live? Where does God live? Does he live on a cloud? He's not. He's, I believe he's God is. I believe God is everywhere. In Psalm 139 in the Old Testament, it says that God's spirit is present everywhere, yeah, all over. Around. He's following me around right now. Yes, in fact, God's spirit is inside you. What'd you say? I don't believe it. I'm agnostic. What if you're mute? What if you're um, a deaf, dumb person? Then how would you know God? I'll give you an example of Helen Keller. Helen Keller was deaf and dumb, and yet Helen Keller wrote in many of her books her faith and her experience of God in prayer were the most real things to her somehow. Now, I'm not exactly sure how that happened, but she was able to communicate with God and have a sense of daily fellowship with God, the same as any one of us could. He created man, as you said before. Why did he, he created this person. She didn't do it to himself. She was a deaf mute, right? Then why did he create her? Like this. Why what? did he want this person to be deaf mute? Why did he want Ellen Keller to be a deaf mute? Because everyone, because everyone can't be the same. Yeah, but he, he said he just created all men. Let me say this. God established physical laws of cause and effect on this earth. Laws of physics, laws of chemistry, laws of gravity, and laws of reproduction. If a mother, for example, has rubella, or measles during pregnancy, we know that the statistics are, the chances are, that there will be a deformed child or some sort of imperfection. Now these are laws of physical cause and effect, and God does not go around arbitrarily breaking these laws of cause and effect which he has established. You see what I mean? No, but you said he created man, right? But then I thought the woman and the man created man, not him. He created I believe the God, the I believe... He didn't create his baby. I believe God is the creator. Human beings are the procreators of man. That's a different thing. Okay, well, God is the ultimate source and center of all reality. He, well, the baby was being born. He was creating her. Inside. God gave man life, this force of life, which surges in every human being. This is a divine gift. And this helped to keep it in there, to keep it warm. But he created the person. But then, well, the ultimate source, the final stuff. source of all creativity He's is God, yes. Things inside the stomach, you know, making the person. Then he didn't create it. The but, but he the, created the first one. God, again, is the source of this creative energy, and that's the important thing. What would you say? The first cause. Yes, the first cause, the ultimate source, the primal cause. The, the philosopher Aristotle called God the prime mover, or the first mover, the first origin of energy and motion. And that means that the creative genesis and energy originally came from God. But the important thing is that God is this spiritual father, and a person can have a very close and vital sense of companionship daily with God. And that's what prayer is about. That's what worship is about. Procreate is uh, yeah, the ability to procreate is a God-given gift. Man, I don't, all these words you're saying, I don't understand them, but I mean, every time... I'll come book, up with some different words, yes? No, well, all in, the, in the books, in all the books about how the baby's born, they're talking about tubes in the body, right? The tubes in the body are, and everything are created. I mean, God is inside the body, creating this person. He is connecting all the tubes to the... No, it means that God has given all the tubes in the body. You, oh, you mean God, God created the tubes? Yes, and the, yes, that's what. Oh. That's what I mean when I say God is the creator. Human beings are the procreators. Oh, that's a very good point. That's. A, what'd you say? You sure would be happy if you don't believe in God and don't believe in anything. If you don't believe in anything. You have to think about it, then you sure are happier. Oh, I think the delight of human life is to think about these questions. But you're all thinking about all this junk about God, and He made war, and He did all this junk. And then you oh, I didn't say that God ever made a war. I said that people made the wars. People and the people made the war. And the same people to make the war. Because he made them free. That's the important thing about God. Free. Why are they in war? Because they chose evil. Oftentimes people choose evil. If you're created free, this is the whole challenge. This is the reason I'm here on this Berkeley campus now talking about this. The time is coming when we have to begin to live in peace and not think of people of different skin colors as weird and not oh, deprecate them. Do... Look, he created me. Now, I mean, he created the person who thought this person was weird. Why? Look, there's one white person who thought this black person was a slave, so he made him a slave. And other white people did that. There, that wasn't... That... Ah, the point is, people hating each other in one person wanting to oppress another person or use another person or treat that other person not as a brother but only as an object, that is a free choice each individual makes. When enough people make the choice to do evil to other people, great evil results. If enough people choose to do good to each other, a great good can result. That's the challenge before us. Yes, uh, all these problems you're speaking of, you know, if, uh, if you were uh, to be successful, 
to contact the spirit that he's speaking of, you know, you wouldn't have all this evil in the world, right? Then why can't we contact him? No. Oh, we can, and that's what prayer is about. Said the way to contact is to turn deep within, and you said the way to do this is by prayer. Now, now yes. Prayer is a matter of faith or belief, isn't it? He doesn't talk back. It does take faith and the belief to believe that you're talking to someone in prayer. Yes, that is necessary. What does prayer accomplish? How does it work on you? How does prayer accomplish anything? How does it make you turn within in order to contact this, this spirit that is supposed to make you uh, good, you know? Prayer is the contacting of spiritual energy. There are two different ways of looking at What did you say? Nothing. <laughs> did you say you agreed with that, that it's contacting spiritual energy? I would say it this way. There are two different theories of prayer, essentially. One is that prayer is the idea of manipulating God, getting God to do man's will. The other concept is, and that's essentially anthropologically a magical concept, the other one is prayer is just the opposite. It is God being able to get man to do God's will, his will, God's will, and this is the concept which Jesus, for example, taught, that it's seeking God's will. Isn't it like a two-way communication? Yes, it's not just a monologue to heaven, right. He talks back to you? Yes, there's an inward voice and leading. I yes. believe in God. I, well, I don't know if I believe in God or not. I'm not too sure about that. But I mean, when, if I, some, once or twice I try to pray, I didn't hear him talk back to me. I didn't hear him saying, okay, I'll do it for you. I mean, I this, <laughs> this is a still small voice which sometimes grows still smaller in terms of people not listening to it. I pray for something. I pray like, okay, I want to get an A or something on my report card. And you know what? The answer will come back. The answer will come back. Study, my child. Study. Okay, so if I study and I said oh, anything or I ask or if I ask, um, I want to grow this flower. I want to grow this flower and I'll take care of it. He might not give it to me. Oh, precisely. Because God is concerned that you grow and not just concerned with doing little parlor magic trips for you. What do you ask him? What do you ask him when you when you pray? What do you I ask for things such as strength, <laughs> wisdom to answer questions like this one, and courage and such things as these spiritual things. In other words, almost... Do you pray with your hands together and your eyes closed? How do I pray? With your hands together and your eyes closed? No, not necessarily. I have prayed hanging upside down from a bar, as a matter of fact. No, well, what if you don't pray with your hands or something? Is there any way that you cannot communicate him if you don't do it right? If you don't say, oh, man, will he, will he commute? Have you heard of mental telepathy before? Thought transference? Reading each other's minds? Yeah, but it looks... Maybe that's a little one way to describe what prayer is like. It doesn't necessarily depend on... It's a mental thing. Sometimes he doesn't hear you, right? Sometimes... But if there's... No, he always hears you, and he always answers, but sometimes the answer is no. Yeah. Well, I get the word God. What did you say? I have to get the word God. God is from the Anglo-Saxon good, and it's simply good with one O taken out. I spell God. Um, who named him? I mean, how can they name him when when he was dead? When God is dead? God is, oh, I believe he's alive. I talked with him just this morning, as a matter of fact. How do you talk with him? That's what prayer is about. That's how prayer works. It's talking with God. I don't believe in it. Have you ever tried it? I did, but I just don't believe in it because he's not human. If so, ah. neither is a dog. So, so I can't see him, so he's not there. So. Ah, let me ask, have you ever seen an atom or an electron? No. No. Do you believe that atoms and electrons are real? No. You don't believe that they're real because you haven't seen them? I haven't seen them. Wait, wait. Why did he rise from his grave? Why didn't he? Why, why did he rise from his grave? Why didn't I, even though I maybe I was crucified or something, why weren't the other people who were crucified with him rising? Why was he? Jesus did teach this possibility of resurrection for all people. Yes. If you don't believe in him, why should he listen to you? Oh, if you don't believe in God, why should he listen to your prayers? Uh-huh. I believe he listens to you because he loves all human beings. This is the highest teaching about God. How can he, how can he hear you with all those people? And probably everybody's praying now. How can he hear you? Just good ears. How can God hear people when... What if she's praying here, I'm praying there, and somebody else is way over there? God can... because, because according to the highest teachings about God, he is omniscient, that means all-knowing, that he's infinite, he's everywhere. One time Nicodemus, in the New Testament, in the Gospel according to John, asked Jesus this very question. Oh, he has much bigger. He's the God of the whole universe. And his... Who makes... Do the clouds make it rain, or does he make it rain? He makes the clouds, and the clouds make it rain. But, but why does he put why does he put floods? Why does he make the clouds make floods? And the cult now the clouds didn't think to themselves, oh I'll flood this person because I don't like him. Yeah, of course. No, but the God no, how did the God make Jesus said that God sends his rain on the just and the unjust and the sunshine on the good and bad alike, that God has established meteorological okay, or weather laws in the same way. Rain on her? 
Oh no, this is what Jesus is saying does not happen. He's saying that this is universal. Why? What would you say is the uh, one most crucial teaching uh, of Christ? The most crucial ones? The, most, the, the one most crucial one, you know. The one most crucial one is found in Mark chapter 12 in my conviction where he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And he said, the second one is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. How do you develop that capacity, such a capacity, you know, love capacity? To love God this way? In other words, you know. First of all, in the faith that God loves you that much, if you can really dare to believe that you're infinitely, boundlessly beloved by this Father God, then there's an inward impulse to want to love God in return. You get this inward impulse by faith and belief, in other words. Yes, it's a matter of faith. Do you, do you know the whole Bible? You want me to recite it? Yes. No. I can't because no. I don't know it. <laughs> Tell me how you pray, please, so I can, I'll hold your microphone while you do it. <laughs> Show you how I pray? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus said you know one time when... Are you allowed to pray to other people? Jesus said that if a person prays on a street corner just to be seen by other people, He's probably doing it more to impress them, to show off, than he is really to communicate with God. Another time, Jesus said, go into a closet and pray and talk with God. In, closet, In other words... I wouldn't want to be uncomfortable I was talking while I was praying to him. No, really. You wouldn't have to be uncomfortable. Be uncomfortable. Pray anyway. Pray What'd you say? Anyway you want. Like, I can pray right now. I can... What are they doing? The people who are dancing over there and chanting, that might be a form of prayer. Different. There are many different uh, forms of prayer, right? You're yes, very definitely. Both east and west. Yes, and I think the fact that people call these by different names is quite secondary, in the same sense that, for instance, here in this country we call gasoline gasoline for our cars. In Ireland and Great Britain they call it petrol, but it's still power. And in the same way, prayer, whether it be called meditation or worship or whatever, is fundamentally spiritual power. You've been listening to On Campus a non-sectarian, non-denominational public affairs presentation. For free printed transcripts, write to Box 347, Berkeley, California, 94701, and ask for the booklet, Questions University Students Ask. It offers simple, understandable answers to some of the most perplexing questions confronting modern humankind. Who are we? Why are we here? Where did we come from? Where are we going? The title of this free booklet, containing transcripts of unrehearsed, spontaneous question and answer sessions on campus, is Questions University Students Ask. The mailing address, Box 347, Berkeley, California, 94701. I've also written Finding God, Getting to Know God, and Growing Spiritually about the processes of inward discovery and adventure, the new power and purpose potential for every human life. Another free piece of literature is Freedom from Fear. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international network of stations, let me spell out that mailing address once again, Box 347, Berkeley, B-E-R-K-E-L-E-Y, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 94701, USA. When you write, please send us the call letters of the radio station over which you heard this international broadcast. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley reminding you to tune in again next time over this same station for On Campus.